Dear Life Warriors, living and surviving are two different things. Today's special guest is Madeline McQueen, an executive coach, trainer, and speaker. She helps professional women in leadership gain clarity, build confidence, and thrive. Please welcome Madeline McQueen. Dear Life Warriors, it's me, Shar, your favorite corporate life coach. And today I have a really special guest. Her name is Madeline McQueen coming to us all the way from the UK. This is the first time I'm actually talking to someone in the UK. I'm so excited. Um, And she is an executive coach, a trainer, a speaker. She's been featured in Forbes. I mean, she's on the board of non-for-profits. Her accolades go on and on and on. I do not have enough time in this intro to do that. But (laughs) Madeline, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. I was just trying to turn off my notifications and press the wrong darn button, which is actually the kind of thing I do all the time, it seems. Uh, (laughs) Thank you for having me, Char. I really appreciate it. No, we, I love it. I can't wait to dive into your story. But most importantly, my life warriors, we are going to be blessed with the accent today. <laughs> I love love when people have accent. I just love it. And um, to my brother, Marco, in the UK, look who I'm talking to. Hi, I, Marco. <laughs> all the way to in the UK with my girl, Madeline, today. Madeline, welcome. Welcome. Shah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you also just for creating space for women of, you know, black women, women of color to be able to have these conversations and share the journey and the nuggets yes. and the learning. I appreciate you. Yes. And I'm, I've been watching you on LinkedIn um, and you're just all over the world. You're, you're touring, doing speaking engagements. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Yeah, the last one was Portugal and it was wonderful. <laughs> yes, I see you. But you are like, you started out in sales. Your story's a little, yeah. you have a sales background, whereas I came from a market and human resources background. So it's mm. interesting. I would love to hear how you maneuver. Yeah, from sales into <laughs> your coaching business. But, I mean, even before sales was customer service and I oh. basically was doing that. Uh, And in in fact, you know, when you're young, uh, you end up doing lots of different things. So one of the jobs that I took on when I was like in my teens, so I started in um, McDonald's, actually. Um, I took it as a part time job. In my first six months, I became employee of the year. They wanted me to take the management track. And I was like, hell no. Opened a number of uh, different stores. Um, and thought, well, what do I want to do? And I didn't go to university and I made a cho- choice not to because I knew I was that kind of person that would do two weeks of work, six weeks of mucking about. And I didn't want to get to the end of three years and have a really bad degree and have nothing to show for it. So right. I thought, OK, I'm going to learn in the school of hard knocks. I'm just going to go straight into work. I love that. Wow. Yeah. So I never did that journey. And uh, I love it. My my youngest daughter, Glassy, just graduated high school and she's not doing that journey either. She's made a decision. She's not going to college. Yeah. And I think we need to allow space for yes. our children and young people to follow a track. And if they're clear and often they're not clear, let's be clear. Most of us in our teens have no idea what we really want to do. And we have no idea what the options are. Are. <laughs> They're much wider than the things our parents are telling us. So my mom was, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a mechanic. He was an entrepreneur, but he died when I was 10. And so, um, you know, my mom was very much, you should go into nursing. And honest, I I do have the profile. I could easily, I was like, oh, hell no. Because at that time, you know, you know, my parents were Windrush generation. So they had some of the first that came over, um, to help kind of booster the UK and England. So, Everybody who I knew, a lot of the people I knew, most of the women were black women who were nurses. Right. And I was like, I take nothing away from it, but it's not what I want to tell them. And it's not what I want my children to go to school and say, when they say, what does your mum do? That I wanted them to have something else to say. Right. And so that's how I ended up. So I from McDonald's 
um, I actually ended up in customer service for an insurance company. And then I met my uh, now husband. I was like in my uh, late teens, early 20s. Really? Um, you've been ma- Wait, you've been married that long? We've been to so we've been together for 33 years wow. and married for 26. Okay, that's yeah. a whole nother show. I need to know. That's a whole, that's a whole nother, nother show. <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole nother story. Uh so yeah, so I moved to London. I didn't have a job, but I thought, okay, I'll get a I'll apply for a job for customer service because that's what I've been doing. And uh they made me take a psychometric test and I turned out as the ideal salesperson and they gave me a job as a financial advisor to sell financial products, which I did for a while. I moved to a couple of companies and then decided I wanted to do something different and ended up in tech uh, sales. So in the so I in the year 2000, I sold the most Toshiba laptops in the country. Toshiba sent me to Dubai on holiday. I did this massive two million deal for a company I worked for called Micro Warehouse, who um, and basically did a two million deal uh, to work with a big company called Schlumberger. They're big in oil. And I, I yeah, I did really, really well. And then I got pregnant. And uh, I was married. Wait, you said and, that, and then I got pregnant. Right. Yeah, right. Because you know, back then, you know, that sales environment was even though it was an old boys environment, and yeah, even though there were you know women working, the truth of the matter is, is you know, as well, there are those who are doing you know sniffing things on a, a on a weekend, right. and <laughs> you know, in the pub, we call it the pub, uh, but in yeah, the pub, know every, the pub. Every, you know, the pub uh, <laughs> or the bar, should I say, you know, after work, making decisions. And it got, I got really stressed out, um, had some real challenges, had a team that I was managing, had a boss who was a bit abusive. Um, and I originally was climbing until I had a baby. And that's when I, you know, there was no kind of room, the room that I needed, like, like you know, morning sickness. I remember my boss calling me oh, at three yes. days in and I had morning sickness. He said, oh, doesn't morning sickness only happen in the morning? It was the afternoon. It's like, no, <laughs> no doesn't, it, doesn't it end at three months? And it's like, no, oh. it's all more complex than that. Um, but when I had that baby and, and uh, my daughter was two, no, she was coming up for her fourth birthday. I got pregnant again and I just said, uh, and I had a miscarriage and I knew it was stress. And I said, I can't deal with this. Yeah. But my, I had a really good doctor and he just said, you and your husband are literally fertile. You are ripe for pregnancy. Have another baby, which yeah. is what we did. Um, we, um, my youngest daughter was born. But what I did is I left corporate. I left, left that entire world. I didn't even take maternity leave. I just left. I just said, enough is enough. My baby's more important. Yeah. Um, and then I started once kind of like balanced out my life. I had a younger, you know, my oldest daughter was in um, in school, just going to school. I had this new baby and uh, I tried to go back to work <laughs> and uh, my husband was at home at the time and my children, you'd come home every day and my children look crazy. So I was like, okay, this is not working. This is crazy. You, what did you eat? Stuff on their face like, mom, <laughs> Save that us. is not working out. <laughs> um, and so I started doing business consulting and sales consulting because that, you know, just on the side. Okay, so pause before you you said so much and like <laughs> yeah, I don't even know yeah. where to go right now because <laughs> you dished out a lot in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that. back let's backtrack a little bit because I mm. experienced that same thing with morning sickness and the employer not understanding, my boss not understanding what my last I have a, both both my daughters I had very young, my first daughter at 20. Wow. Um, and then my second one around 26, but it was my second daughter where that morning sickness really hit me hard. And I had it pretty much the whole pregnancy. I didn't stop until about seven months being sick. Yeah. And they kept pressuring me like every morning I had to, I was late for work because of course we, I'm over the toilet, like half the morning. They knew I was expecting, but they didn't really seem to care. It was like, yeah. You need to be here at nine o'clock. And fast forward now where I'm at an older age, I, I, I got into human resources and I'm running my organizations differently. I'm going, what is a big deal arriving at nine o'clock to nine ten? Why do we make that 
like such a huge deal, especially for someone who is pregnant and expecting. I mean, was it, is it too much to ask for a little compassion <laughs> when someone's having a baby? I don't know. People don't care. And I think the truth of the matter is, is it's so much about the bottom line without even recognizing how you can have the bottom line yes. and still be human. And still be human. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, that, like if you're human and if you can have some compassion, then actually what happens is, People want to give more, not less. Not less. And you know, you can... I remember Go ahead. my boss came at me one day. He shouted at me across the uh, across the sales floor in front of the rest of the team. Um, because I was a corp- I was this is when I was a corporate account manager before I moved up to a sales manager and manager team. Yeah. And I remember him shouting at me, going, I can't remember what he said, but it was really insulting. And I took him in a room and I said, don't do that. And he was like, what do you mean? He said, don't do that. Now there's another black guy on the team. And he said, uh, well, Lindsay, like Lindsay's all right with it. I said, my name's not Lindsay. Lindsay might like it, but not me. And actually I thrive from praise. You praise me. You give me that space. You allow me to build and grow. And you give me some, that not leeway, but just understanding and some compassion you're going to get the best out of me. I'm going to go out of my way. Right. But this berating. Yes. You just shut me down. And yes. I think this is a thing that a lot of women experience, you know, having a baby and the lack of understanding. You can go to HR and HR, sadly, also don't understand. Yes. I, I, I mean, it's like, and also the thing of that really peeves me is, your pregnancy experience isn't every pregnancy experience. It's it's individual. Every woman it has their own experience when it comes to their pregnancy and having a baby. No two people yeah. have the same experience. Not at all. And, and I think and that's my favorite line. I've actually that. heard someone say, well, this person didn't, you know, she was pregnant. She was here every single day on time. Okay. <laughs> That's nice for her, right? You know, that's, that's really great. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. And so I, I did go through that. And that was, and then when I did have my baby and, you know, went back to work, <laughs> you know, I went back to work and they put me in the inbound sales because I was outbound sales, I worked with corporates, inbound sales. And I was working part time. And I was doing the full time people's talk I was hitting their targets wow and they couldn't get it it's just they didn't understand that I didn't need to beg because I knew how to sell I just knew because selling is about relationships about nothing else right and then you ask so it was just so really really interesting I went back and then obviously had then by the time I went full-time you know I had a child manager and then there was daycare and you know so I'm picking up my child at maybe seven. I dropped her off at seven, picking her up at seven. Yeah. And then when when she's sick and the, they're calling, I'm having to send the child minder because my boss is saying, what about your team? Yeah. If you, if you don't, um, if you're not with them, how do, how do you think you should get the commission off of your team if you're not here? And I'm like, hold on, wasn't your daughter sick two weeks ago? And I'm like, it's a baby. Yes. <laughs> And they do not come with a, a manual that tells me exactly when they're going to be sick. There's no manual. They don't come with a manual full stop. Okay. <laughs> Period. With a T at the end. Right? <laughs> they don't. And I think this is the thing, the pressure that women are put under when it comes to pressure. pregnancy. And I just said, I'm done. When I when I knew I was pregnant again after having a miscarriage, I said, I'm done. You know, people go, you know, you want to wait for maternity. What, for me to lose another baby under stress? Hell no, not me. Yeah. Wow. It's, you know, I think we, I don't know what it is either. We're we're brain, we got, we've gotten brainwashed over the years to not put our own health first. I'm so glad that you took a stance and said, you know what? I'm not going to go through this. I am going to have this baby in good health. My mental health come first and my wellness come first. My well-being come first. 
But a lot of us women, unfortunately, we stick through it and we don't realize how much stress we're actually embarking on our bodies. The damage is real. It's real and it's internal and it cannot be seen until it could be seen. Absolutely. And normally it's coming out in ca- as cancer. It's coming out oh, yes. as depression. It's coming out as high blood pressure. Okay. It's coming out of all of these things. And I think specifically for black women and specifically in our, you know, this, our community, and even that is a, you know, a challenging phrase, but the truth of the matter is, is we keep bearing it all. Oh. And it's like in bearing it all, what happens? Yes. Yes. And what happens on your baby too. It's also... It's coming out as an unhealthy baby. You, right. you have a baby that's coming out unhealthy. Yes. The child feels your trauma. Oh. They don't think they don't. Even as they, as they, when they're out, they feel your trauma. They yes. know. They know. Like I never told my youngest, my oldest daughter that I had had a miscarriage, but she knew. She actually said, mommy, don't cry. You'll have another baby. I haven't told her. Wow. They know. They just know. And we are on a daily basis teaching our children how to show up in this world. So we are the ones taking on everything and saying it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, even when it's not. We are teaching them to do exactly the same thing. And actually, we have to break the cycle. We have to break the cycle. It doesn't matter that our mother or our mother's mother did it. They did it maybe because of their necessity at that time. Things have changed. Yes, tremendously. And how are we changing is to the time is important. And are we changing to the time? A lot of us are not. A lot of us are I don't think that's something we're not. And I, you know what the biggest example of that is for me? Food. Oh. And I'll tell you why. We're okay. still eating cow foot when actually we could be eating steak. Why are we still eating the worst parts of meat when we could be eating the prime parts of meat? That's true. I'm Jamaican. So, right. <laughs> so you, you know, I'm half, know. half Antiguan. Oh, we know like how foot we've turned. But what I what I said to I was I just having this conversation the other day. And what I actually said to my mom is like, you know, Jamaicans are, we are definitely extraordinary. You know why? Because we have taken the scraps that has been given to us and we have turned it into a delicacy. No, that is what we've done. And we're very good at doing it. We're very good I at think doing it. We need to recognize we don't have to. Have to. Right. We right. actually don't have to, but we continue to. And I think this is showing up in lots of different areas of our lives and it's time yeah. for it to change. It is, but what is it going to take, though, Madeline? I think people. Um, I'm doing a show because, I'm trying, to, yeah, I'm trying to show people. Guess what? You're going to have to really take time and work on yourself. You're going to have to stop what you're doing and say enough is enough, and and spend some time working on you as a person and figuring out who you are as an individual, getting to know yourself, being honest with yourself. And be okay with showing up with what you've discovered about yourself. I, this is, you and I are speaking the same language. I I truly believe that what we have to learn to do is the work. And I'm not talking the twice as hard work because I think that's bull, big bull. Um, Because I think all it does is what I see in my clients is that they're digging themselves into a hole that nobody will take them out of. Yeah. And I truly believe that it's the personal development work that needs to be done. You know, we've got accolades coming out of our ears, you know, and yeah, you've got the handbag and you've got the shoes and, and you've got the car and you've got the this and the that. But the thing you don't have is the personal development stuff. And that's the getting uh, to in touch with who you really are and what you really want. Yes. Because too many of us are out there living our lives on somebody else's terms, yes. whether that's the job or parents or other family members or whoever, or yes. Sally down the road and what she got going on. Yes. All I'm saying is it's time for us to really start looking at what do I want for me? What's my, why am I here? What am I going to impact? I don't, even if you don't know what your purpose is, that's fine. What's the purpose for today? Yes. Yes. Today, focus on your moments. Life warriors, take that. 
Amen. Like, Focus on your moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> like I am in this moment right now with Madeline and that's where I'm at. I don't right. know about anything else that's going on. I'm, I'm right here right now. And people don't understand how impactful that is, how powerful that is. If you really just say, wake up. And focus on that day. Mm, mm, That's absolutely. it. That is it. That's all and you have to do. Mm-hmm. Because we as was, was women, especially as black women, we take on everything and we have this very fix it mentality. We f- want to fix everything and everyone. Nobody asked you. <laughs> I had to l- I've had to learn this the hard way. Nobody asked you. Fix it. And the other thing is that the phrase is... <laughs> That is so true. And then we're the ones who are frustrated and upset and all of our energy messed up because we're here trying to fix people who didn't ask us to fix them. (laughs) It's a hard lesson to learn, believe me. Because you know what? One of my breakups many years ago, I'm no longer like this. Um, (laughs) They did say to me, I am not one of your projects. You then making plans and doing all sorts, doing the most, right? I mean, the thing that saved me, I heard this phrase a couple of years back and it has literally, I think maybe 2018 and it's been my saving grace since then because I was doing that. I was doing the most. And it is not my circus, not my monkey. This is what I say. <laughs> not my circus. There's like, oh, you know, I think we need not to. My I just say, not my circus, not my monkey. That's it. I'm Love done. It. I'm done. People pay me for that kind of work. Let me just stop. That's, it. That's a million dollars right there. You walk in, I can see you walking in, looking around for two minutes and say, oh, I got the solution. <laughs> Not my circuit. Not my circuit. And I, I have to t- remind myself because I'm like, you know, even simple things. Look, I have had such a, I've had people stop me in the street. I don't know what it is in my aura, but I have people, I had, I was putting my shopping in the boot of my car in the, in the supermarket car park. And, um, a woman came up to me and she said, can I ask you a question? And I was like, okay. She, Cause you look really trustworthy. Okay. And this is how it started. I said, okay, go ahead. And she said, well, my boyfriend says that, um, I'm just like, the hell? Oh Listen, and it was about her boyfriend who basically was ineffective, emotionally abusive. And I said, you already know the answer because you were asking a random black woman in a carport park. This is a white woman, you know, what she thinks. I've been on the dance floor, Shah, on the dance floor. And somebody's come up to me and told me about, yeah, so, you know, I started dating. I'm dating online. And, you know, I saw this guy and I met him for the weekend. And it's, I'm just like, does it say working on my forehead? <laughs> Just like, and so I literally, I am now, sometimes I have had, oh my God, this is the worst. My sister is always mocking me about this. One of my sisters. I have been in Marks and Spencer's. I don't know if you guys know Marks and Spencer's. Is <laughs> you, need you need tissues. So, and I, there was a woman and she was trying on a dress and I said, you've got the wrong bra on. I just, again, not my, she never asked me any questions. Yeah. You've got the wrong bra. You will look great, but you need a better bra. Which one? I told her which one. And honest to God, I'm walking out the store with my sister and this woman comes running across the store, shaking a bra, going, is this the one? Is this the one? And I said, you know what? Enough. Madeline, not your circus, not your monkey. Stop. <laughs> Mind your business next time. <laughs> no, you know what? That is a great positive aura to have that people are, they see you as someone who could fix things. Yeah, but you know, it's not my portion. That's not my ministry. Not unless you're paying, please. Oh my god, that is funny. So that is a beautiful segue. It's after my t- my eyes. I've never laughed so much. <laughs> that is a beautiful segue into your actual, your actual line of work. <laughs> so here, oh, yeah, this is how I got there. Yeah, we we went from 
your customer <laughs> service life to, to I don't know. And now, <laughs> oh God, how? When, when did you actually start doing? <laughs> your okay, so and is this business under your name? Okay, um, so let me tell you about that. I'll tell you very quickly. So, because uh, I got stories to look the cows come home all right so basically what happened was I was doing business consulting sales consulting and I was working with you know the actual business owners and finding that their confidence was always an issue because they weren't confident enough and clear enough and empowered enough it was actually impacting how their their business showed up yeah now this is how I made the segue because I realized I'm not necessarily always doing sales and, and business what I'm actually doing a lot of time is helping people see what's great about them. And so my husband and I, we have a phrase which is about embracing your magnificence. And that's kind of like the underlying thing of what we do because everyone's born magnificent. It's just the layers of labels in of other people's crap, let's be honest, that we carry around with us um, like baggage, you know, and it stops us seeing what's great. You're like, you know, let's be clear, in the when we go on holiday and we oh we're taking a flight and we take I'm bags laughing at <laughs> no but it's true we take bags right and if they're overweight or if they're not the ba- they're not our, if they're not our bags they get blown up right that's the first and 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 then if it's if there's too much baggage we pay more so let's yeah. just stop taking around other people's baggage with us oh. and that was my thing right let's stop doing it because it's no good for us in any form or fashion. So I started then just being clear and saying, okay, I do executive coaching because I I had done a college coaching qualification. I do exec coaching because I work with the leaders. I'm always working with the leaders. And so I started working a lot in advertising and working a lot with leaders around that, still do. Um, And a lot of my work has just been word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. So back to the company, David and I, my husband and I have a company called um, Q Squared. Q Squared, I saw that. Q Squared. So yeah, so it's a play on obviously McQueen. So it's Q and there's two of us. So we're Q Squared. Um, I love that. Yeah, so he does um, exec coaching as well. He does a lot of leadership stuff, that kind of thing. We both speak. Um, I love to host a conference, especially a tech conference. Um, And um, also I deliver workshops around my work, which is clarity, confidence and empowerment to enable people to thrive. Love it. But I just incorporated a company called Magnificently You. Um, Because if you notice my email say Magnificently Yours at the end. Yes, yes. Yes. So. This is going to hold my club. I have a club that's coming that's exclusive for leaders, leaders, professional women in leadership and emerging because we all know most women should be doing their boss's boss job, right? It's just nobody, they haven't been promoted or they haven't advocated for themselves as they need to. As they need to, yes. As they need to. So that's what's coming and that sits under Magnificently You and it's called the Compass Club. So yeah, helping you find your North Star. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. There you have it, my life warriors. Listen, Madeline is out here giving free advice. If you see her in the park, don't get <laughs> Don't you dare. I'm gonna and you're gonna hear me go. Not my circus. That's nice. Not my circus, not my monkey. Not my monkey. <laughs> I am kidding, <laughs> but I love it. I love that. And you're, you're doing this um, internationally. It's not so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work internationally. I, I don't work exclusively in the UK. I think it's wonderful. I love speak, talking to clients uh, uh, internationally as well. Wow. It's good fun. Um, it also helps my own practice because different perspectives from different parts of the world, the truth of the matter is the issues are all the same. Yes. And with that being said, I'm going to leave you on that note. The issues are definitely all the same. They really are. But our new phrase on this show is not my circus, not my monkey. (laughs) 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 To tell people that. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. (laughs) Trademark that one. (laughs) So 
my life warriors, I hope you really enjoyed this conversation with Madeline and I. I hope that she comes back soon. Mm. It's, so, it's so much to talk about, especially when it comes to employers. Um, I'm, I'm trying to set up a round table soon where we get a lot of uh, these powerful women just talking about how we can make change in organization, you know, and, and helping employers to see and that we, the people, are actually the asset. Absolutely. And I, I'm loving that you're doing that. And, and one thing I'm just going to say, the two things I want to say on that, if that's okay, before you cut me off. Um, <laughs> no, no, Never number, one, number one is that as women, we need to do better. I really cannot deal with the crabs in a barrel mentality. It's doing my head in. Um, this whole thing of I've got to be the one in the room. And so I'm going to stand on everybody in order for me to be there. It's a bad as well it's bad breed pick me behavior. That's what we were saying in the Caribbean, right? It's bad behavior. And also it undermines everything that we're needing to do. We need to get rid of patriarchy to get rid of racism. But we can't do that if we keep throwing each other under the bus. And then the second thing is, I'm loving that you're planning on a round table. And the reason why is because there's room. I think there's too much, too many issues amongst us of, well, if I'm doing this, well, I'm doing that. Well, I'm doing, hold on, there are plenty of us and not one of us can deal with all of us. Yeah. And not each of, you know, we're all, you will have a different market to my market. We will appeal to different people even though we're in the same kind of game, right? Yeah. We still, there are some leaders that will never come to me that will show sh- you will be exactly what they want. We need to start right. having that attitude. So it's great. You know, I'm like, okay, hey, you you know, you know what works with me? Shah's got a round table that might be the best place for you. Right. We need to become more comfortable with having that kind of conversation because you know what, white people, that's what they do. They that's do. why they keep it amongst themselves. No. Because they ensure that if it's not with me, make sure with it is with Bob over there. Right. Somebody. I think there is definitely room for everyone. I think look how many technology company there is out there that's doing it and they're all thriving. I mean, there's definitely room. Like you said, it's about a connection. Someone might not want a Char and it's completely in love with a Madeline. You know what I mean? That's okay too. Madeline might offer a piece of a service that I don't like doing because I know I personally don't. I tell my my other coaches that do sexual harassment trainings and things. I don't. Mm. I don't. Mm. I know I'm HR. I don't like it. I am really more. (laughs) I am really. I hear you. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, no, I I will refer you over here to someone else, because at the end of the day, I I only want to do things that brings me joy. And Amen. And I'm happy doing it. And I'm all about that personal development professional. I, I focus only on the soft skills training. I want I want people to ha- really find themselves do that mm. in the work. I want them to be able to take use the tools that I'm giving them inside and outside the job. It's not just about work for me. It's about giving them the power, empowering them to go be their best selves, live their best lives. I focus on here, the the mentality, the mental health, the mindset, the thought. That's what I focus on. I'm like, if I could fix you up here, I am definitely giving you wealth. Amen. I mean, this is about holistic support. And um, the truth of the matter is, is that what we keep doing, trying to do is compartmentalize who we are. And actually, you know, even this whole thing about bringing your best self to work or not bringing your whole self to work. The truth of the matter is, is every day you take your whole self to to work, whether you like it or not. You know, you might not speak all your things, but every day all of you goes and all of you is impacted by what you experience and vice versa. Absolutely. And the whole self is here, your heart, (laughs) what's up here, what's in your heart, like everything that has happened externally before you actually stepped into the workplace, everything that happens at home, you know, when your child is sick, guess what, when I show it doesn't even make sense for me to actually show up to work when my baby is sick, because I'm at work thinking about my baby. There is no work getting done. Right. And And what you do isn't great. Isn't great. <laughs> you would do the bare minimum because you can't wait to get back to your baby and you spend half your time checking on the baby. So these are the things where employees as 
they could see now that we can actually work from home. We can actually do it. Look how quickly we pivoted to working from home with no problem. But back then it was, uh, you need to come to work. When I could have clearly been at home taking care of my child and working as well. Right. And not stress. And not stress. Because you know you're you'll know you're there. You can deal with it. You can get something done. Um, oh, baby's gone to sleep. Please. Let me knock out this. So yeah, I'm 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 all for us recognizing that. I think what we that what's happened is we've lost the humanity in our in our human existence, yeah. and that's what we need to pull back. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I was like, let's bring back the human in HR. I started mm-hmm. that conversation. Um, I also feel like at the end of the day, we should really and truly change the way that we view. Um, how we manage people and become coaches to employees. That's also my big thing. Like, yeah. let's become coaches to our employees and, and not just be a manager and not just be about that bottom line you were talking about. Let's actually mm. help people function at their highest, at their best, whatever that is. And then your bottom line is going to be great anyway. But because be toxic great. environments seep. Like your customers feel it, your suppliers feel it, yeah. everybody feels it. Yeah. And they, I deal with them because I have to, not because they want to. want to. And the minute somebody else comes along, it's like, you know what? This is such a better experience. And so I'll go with them. And so you're right. The sooner we get with treating people like human beings and recognizing each and every one of our humanity, then what happens is we have a better existence for sure. Right. For sure. Thank you so much. No, thank you. I really enjoyed this. I love talking to you. Um, thank you for sharing all those gems and nuggets and making me laugh as hard. <laughs> I think this was the first day I- I've laughed so hard this week. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm pleased to be of service. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, my life warriors, that this is the wonderful, amazing. Madeline McQueen, I will put all her information when I post this video, it will be there, but it is MadelineMcQueen.com, right? We could get yes, it is. there, which is so yeah. easy and simple. She has it down pat. Um, definitely follow her on LinkedIn. And I do believe you're on Instagram. I am. I'm the I'm Madeline McQueen. Instagram. I will find yeah. you on Instagram and follow. Um, but do know, my life worry is that there is a coach out here that loves you. <laughs> <laughs> 